Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, and I decided to start a second word study. We're in the middle of repent slash repentance. But I wanted to start another word study called uh, on the word person. So um, this is an intro, so we're going to go through the definitions that's in the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. And it has a lot of them, but it all comes down to one definition when using all of these. Okay, And some are not used, I don't know if they're used in the Bible. So the whole point of this is person is when it comes to a man, woman, or child, is always a reference to body, so, uh, to somebody who has a body, soul, and it's referred to someone's living. So we're going to read this. Person, noun, you know, person, place, or thing. So it's a noun. So it's a person, not a place, and not a thing. Okay. Definition number one: an individual human being consisting of body and soul. We apply the word to living beings only, possessed of a rational nature. The body when dead is not called a person. It is applied alike to a man, woman, or child. A person is a thinking, intelligent being. But remember the main things there is uh, body, soul, spirit. It's always referred to someone who's living. Definition number two, a man, woman, or child, considering as opposed to things, remember person, place, or thing, it's a person, opposed to things or distinct from them. A zeal for person is far more easy to be perverted than a zeal for things. It's like an example. But you have a man, woman, or child when contrasting it with things that aren't persons. Okay? But still, what does a man, woman, and child have? Body, soul, spirit. Uh, definition number three, a human being, body, soul, spirit, considered with respect to the living body or corporal existence only. Okay. But body, soul, and spirit. Ver uh, definition number four, a human being, body, soul, and spirit, and definitely one, a man, you know, a man, singular, let a person attain attainments be never so great he should remember he is frail and imperfect. But remember, it says a human being. Because like I said, a lot of these definitions are just the world's definition. Doesn't mean those definitions apply to what's going on in the Bible. Some do, some don't. When I'm learning, and you're learning with me, brothers and sisters in Christ. But a human being, body, soul, and spirit. Six, character of office. How different is the same man for, from himself as he sustains the person of a magistrate than that of a friend? Now notice it says character. When you say a character in the Bible, who are you referring to? Moses? Does he have a body, soul, and spirit? Absolutely. Uh, Noah, he's a character in the Bible. Body, soul, and spirit. Person of a magistrate. If a person is taken on the position of a title of magistrate, the person still has a body, soul, and spirit. And that, okay. Definition number seven in grammar. Uh, this was a weird one. Uh, in grammar, the nominative to a verb, the agent that performs or the patient that suffers anything affirmed. Patient. Uh, that's pers that's by soul spirit. Agent. Body, soul, and spirit. By a verb, as I write, he is smitten. She is beloved. The rain descends in torrents. Okay on and on. It's called the first, second, and third person. When you say it's, you're getting the first person's point of view, it's, it's the person that's going through it. But it's still referring to somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. So it's, see, I don't understand it completely when you do this definition, but when you get down to the part where it says called the first, second, and third persons, um, when you go to story writing and you're learning um, from different people's point of view, but that person, whether it's the first person, second, or third person, um, their point of view, it's still talking about somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit, and you're talking about their point of view, how they saw it. Okay. First person would be like somebody that's actually, you're talking about me, I'm driving my car, and I'm, I'm going crazy, and I'm going off the road. That's first person, from my understanding. And second person would be somebody like on the side of the road that sees me swerving and everything, and, and he's telling the story from an outside. He's not the person going through it, but he's explaining what the person's going through from his point of view. Um, 
and you have to get into that more detail, but bottom line, it's still talking about a body, soul, and spirit when the word person is being used. Eight, in law, an artificial person is a corporation or body politic. In person by oneself, with bodily presence, not by representative, the king is in person, visits all around. King in person. In other words, he himself is there, and what does he have? Body, soul, spirit. It's saying that not a representative is going, he himself is going to be there. But it's still a reference, it always goes back to definition number one, a person, body, soul, spirit. So, um, in the Bible, the whole point of this study is to prove that the Godhead is not God in three persons. I mean, we've already proven it, but for you and me, brothers and sisters in Christ, we love Bible studies. We love learning about God's Word and staying in God's Word and making sure this is our rock, our foundation. So Matthew 27, 24. Uh, you'll know these verses because I've gone over them before when talking about the Trinity, but I want to get back to Trinity versus the Godhead, but I want to get back to doing some word studies. So Matthew 27, 24. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather, rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the t multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See you to it. He's referring to Jesus Christ. He's saying, what has he done? I mean, why is he worthy of death? What has he done? And he gets to the point where the mob's just going to kill him and go crazy. Um... So he says, I'm washing my hand of this just person. Referring to definition number one. Two, a man, woman, or child. Um, you know, it's always going to come down to body, soul, and spirit. Okay, Jesus is called a person. 2 Corinthians 2.10 To whom ye forgave anything, I, forgave, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything, to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Person. Okay. Jesus Christ is called a person. So, and then Hebrew 1.3. This is the one, I always say it, they try to twist it. They're always going to try to twist scripture, the Trinity people. But remember the context and the definition. Okay. Mainly it's the definition. Okay. Body, soul, spirit. So, Hebrews 1.3, who being the brightness of His glory, who, Jesus Christ, being the brightness of His, God the Father's glory, and the expressed image of His person. The image is Jesus Christ, His is God the Father, and person is a reference to Jesus Christ. If I say that's my car, or no, say, let's say it's His car, He's not the car. It's showing the car belongs to Him. When it says his person, it's talking about Jesus Christ belonging to God, the Father, the image. He's the image of God. And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. So, and there's a fourth verse. I keep forgetting to get it, and I have a hard time finding it. Um... Once again, I haven't seen it linked on the other ones. If you can link the fourth time, it's mentioned. But so far, when you do the Bible study, only Jesus Christ is ever, ever referred to as a person. The Holy Spirit is never. Even if you try to take that verse in Hebrews and try to say that it's referring to God the Father, then you're saying God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit of His own, separate God from Jesus Christ. And... Where at, when you say God in three persons, one and three, where at in the Bible does it say the Holy Spirit's a person? So I thought, you know what, let's do a study. Let's do a word study on the word person. Let's go through it and let's get the context and let's go through it together. So I'm not going through the whole Bible at once and saying, okay, here it is, throwing it all at you. I'm going to do it like I like doing it. Just go through book by book. Go into it with the attitude of this is what I think and then asking God to show us what is. Because there's times I've been wrong. Uh, if you've seen me do the rock study, um, I was like, God, a rock has never been a reference to anybody but Jesus Christ, God the Father, is when it comes to a man. 
Jesus Christ. But come to find out it was a reference to Abraham being the foundation of the Jewish people, the promise that God gave to Abraham. So, um, let's get to it. And let's have some fun staying in the Word of God and doing a Bible study. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the first book, Genesis.